Welcome to the Renatus Jam. I'm Jay Stark, and with me as always, my fearless co-host, Matt Snyder. Mr. Matt Snyder! That's me. Nice. So, Matthew. Yo, what's up? What is special about this Renatus Jam well, episode? Well, be- besides the fact that we have an incredible guest. Incredible. You will not believe who our guest is. I, I love this guy. But uh, besides that fact, it is number 30. Big 30. Podcast turned 30. Nice. Now. Well, 30, turned 30. 30 weeks. 30 weeks old. We're 30 weeks old. 30 weeks old. You know, it's always yeah. funny to me, like when when babies are born. I knew this is what you were gonna say. Yeah, yeah, keep <laughs> going. Well, no, that's yes. how you count, right? Yes. And then all of a sudden, it becomes months and then years, right? Right. But yeah. Right. We're but probably like, into the months now. We could probably start categorizing ourselves as what? you know, like uh, seven and a half months something old, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, totally. Like we're not even to the toddler stage yet. No, no, but I like to think that uh, <laughs> podcasts uh, grow and evolve quicker than babies do. Oh, it's like dog years, yeah, but podcast dog years. Years. <laughs> like, yeah, which would actually make us like 30. I don't know. That's some <laughs> terrible math, but you know, yeah. so a week equals By a the year. Way, I also podcast. do taxes. You should come to me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is, this is such a good start to number 30, We're man. We're starting off so strong. proud about we, this. We got this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really interesting. I, uh, I lived in Germany for a little while. And in Germany, you don't say one, two, three, right? Mm-hmm. You say one, two, three. Why? Well, because this is your first counter. You're one, your two, thumb three. Is? Yeah. Oh, okay. And and in Europe, it's insulting if you hold up two fingers. That's what I was. So that's what I was wondering because I just heard this on a call previous that we were. Oh both yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. About yes. Australia. About Australia doing the. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Same Apparently, thing. so it's, it's two. But it's the back of the hand. Okay. Like if you show them the back of your hand while you count to two, I guess that's, you're flipping you know, we're, you're we're flipping probably offending so many people in our audience right Look, now. Look, okay, I know <laughs> I know a lot of Australians. None of them are offended at this, okay? None of them. As a matter of fact, if you can offend an Australian, man, you've got a superpower. That's right. that's <laughs> That's been my experience. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, man, I'm so glad. Especially to- if that Australian is from Perth, okay? If that Australian is, is from Perth, it's like, I, it, well, it's like probably offending a Russian. It's just not gonna happen. Man. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna ha- happen by offending those guys. Those That's guys hilarious. are hilarious. They're tough, man. They're crazy. I love That's it. Cra- <laughs> crazy as in, uh, um, uh, like when the when Nitro Circus and and like extreme action sports events travel there. These guys are ready to get out of the stands and just try it themselves. And right. never have. They're like, I, I right. did that once. There's just something special about Perth. Anyways, <laughs> we've right. gone way off the rails, well, as we usually do. To all of our friends in Perth and Australia, or just the world at large. Yeah, we love everyone. We love you all, and welcome to the 30th yeah. episode of the Renatus Jam. Yeah, buddy. How old are we in dog years? Uh, I... I was worried you were going to ask me all that right, question. All right, all right, all right. doesn't matter. Know. We no, should no. probably introduce our guest. We probably should introduce yeah, our guest. we talked about him. He's awesome. He is awesome. Total stud. Total stud. Propping up Arizona by himself practically as far He's as, He's carrying you know, Arizona the, the good people of Arizona are concerned. Yeah. I, I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we can say, that, that we cannot say too much about the influence that this gentleman has had on the great state of Arizona on Renatus, on the world as a whole. I would agree with that. We can't overstate this. So so do do us the honors. Bring out our guest. Bill, we've got Mr. Bill Predabon on the podcast today from the sunny state of Arizona. Just How in you case do- you missed that. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing good, you guys. Just keep going, man. This is, uh, you, you like know, that? I <laughs> Your office got like so much cleaner in the last five minutes. He's been over here cleaning <laughs> while well, we've been ranting and raving about Perth, Australia. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Mr. <laughs> Predabon, <laughs> dude, so good. That's funny. I I'm super excited to have you on the call. We've been wanting to bring you out for a little while, and and due to some last minute finagling. You became available to us, so I want to thank you for for making time for us. Absolutely, and I, I got to start off the podcast by asking you this one very important question: 
on a scale between one and going to the moon, how excited are you to be on the 30th episode of the Renatus Jam? Like I'm on the moon. Like, I mean, it's the 30th, it's the 30th session and, and I'm here and some other chunk missed out. I got the opportunity. Uh, Matt gave me the call. I was in and now I'm on the moon, man. That's how excited I am. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> I like that answer. I do. That's, that's a great answer. That was the correct answer, by was the way. It? Oh, yeah. they, yes, yes. <laughs> there was a wrong answer. And thankfully, <laughs> you didn't go there. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, I know that you have – it's funny because in, in my mind, I, I was asking this question, and I said, I'll log in sorted. And I was like, no, no, no. Sorted's not the right word yeah, here. Sorted is evil. <laughs> sorted is a thing. bad thing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, fate, fateful. What was the word that we were using? Fateful is also bad, but fated. Fateful is bad. Fated is okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you've had had a lot of experience being around the Renatus community, being around Bob Snyder, being around leaders, and and seeing how we have grown. So give me a little bit of backstory. How did you first come to Renatus? Uh, Man, you're right. It's been been a... Quite a quite a bit. I've known I've known uh, Bob Snyder for going on. Well, I guess eleven years. Maybe maybe this could be the twelfth year. Nice. Um, and I was introduced to Renatus um, at an event, a live event in two thousand end of two thousand seven via a, a roadside sign that was uh, a gentleman looking for. Um, looking to help people get into real estate investing. Yep. Wow. And so I, I actually put the number on that roadside sign. Yep. 2007. Um, that was a lot of years ago. Yeah. 13. Like 13 was that long years ago. ago. 13 years ago. <laughs> so you called off yeah, the roadside great. sign. And as soon as you heard anything about Renatus, you're like, yeah, I'm in. That's it. We're done. Well, you know what? It's interesting. You you folks having babies, and, and you guys were even talking about babies earlier, and, and and that sort of thing. When you are an infant, right, and and the world is your oyster, as they say. There's no there's no limiting beliefs. There's no there's none of that preconceived notions and all the crap that goes along with that. You know, I was introduced with an open mind and I was really looking and, and fortunately for me, uh, far more than fortunately for the gentleman that introduced me to Renatus itself. Fortunately for me, Renatus was truly, um, essentially almost my first exposure to real estate investing opportunities and learning how to invest. I, I had, there was something, um, a video and tape program I had, but that was really just almost like reading a book. It wasn't like some major program or something that I could, a, a, an opportunity like this. So that got me looking. And then this was the first thing I found. And so I was like, I'm in, I mean, I, it's kind of a joke, but I was at a presentation and my wife came and this might've been my second presentation. My wife came with me. Um, actually at the time she was my, my, well, no, I think she was, she was my wife at the time. We just got married in 07 and, and I'm sitting there. Yeah, thank you. It's been 13 <laughs> great years, and um, and I, I wouldn't agree, but you know, I'm just kidding. So, uh, you guys, I'm sitting there, and the guy that introduced us, she was a- asking some questions, and they're having a conversation, and I was kind of sitting there, and, and I was, you guys, I was coming out of a pretty bad decision-making process on my previous business that I'd owned for almost eight years. You know, at one point, I was doing very well, doing two two and a half million dollars in sales a year. I had four played again franchises and, um, and I was broke at this time and I, I was in complete transition, basically living off this girl essentially. And I, I was reaching into her purse to get her Wells Fargo credit card so I could pay for the opportunity with Renata's and she was behind her back. She didn't even know. And, um, and uh, <laughs> it probably wasn't a good thing to do that. But you know, it worked she, out. She married you anyways, huh? <laughs> they were already <laughs> stuck at this point. Oh, they were okay, okay. Right. <laughs> so uh yeah, so I was I was in I was in at a low and uh 
and yeah, it's been a, a, an awesome opportunity ever since. Wow. That's nice. quite the story. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. There, there's about a million of those little stories along the way that are, that are pretty funny when it comes to the, the, the beginning episodes of, of my Renatus adventure. Nice. Do you, do you remember that moment when the opportunity went from your head to your heart? You know, we, we talk about that transition a lot in Renatus because a lot of people, it makes a lot of sense to them, but it's not until it really becomes an emotional conviction for them that they really start to hit it big. <clears throat> um, you know, it was probably the first opportunity I got to attend a live educational event, a class. Um, a college back then we called it. Now we have the opportunity, as you guys know, we've evolved so much with so much of your work, Jay and Matt and Bob's uh, vision and, and, and all the home team putting it together. The opportunity to see it live online, live online, live in person, recorded, re-recorded, all those things are, are now available, um, which is, you know, just, just a blessing. Right. Back then, when I got started, there was one option. It was you, you went to a live school, a live presentation of the education. And when I walked into a, an event with 4,000 plus students um, that were all seeking the same opportunity through the same vehicle of Renatus mm -hmm. and, and, and then sat down and witnessed and experienced, rather, the educators at their uncut, raw from the gut training on real estate investing. I mean, it was, I mean, there was coffee in my hand paid for by the company. There was a, a beautiful room, uh, you know, red carpet experience. And I was able to learn uh, what to do. And nice. that was it. That's, that's yeah. awesome. I love hearing those moments, you know, where people become passionate about the education, about the opportunity. I, I really appreciate you're sharing and before before i go to my next question our producer keeps giving me the hand signs here can you can you lean forward as you're talking a little bit will you just get a little bit oh, closer yeah. to your microphone for us like that too yep yeah. nice and i really i appreciate that you got the memo that any time the first of the month lands on a tuesday that you wear you wear the renatus red yeah tnt red baby I, I wore it this morning for a training i did yep nice yeah. Mr. Mr. Matt Snyder did not follow. I wore the Renatus hat. Wow. Really? I believe that this hat is called the J hat, actually. Is it, so you better, is it, you better be careful before you knock it. <laughs> I'm not going to knock it. It's a good looking hat. It is. It's the, I love that hat, and my dog ate it. I need another one, but you only have them large, large, extra large. I need it in a small, medium in the J hat, and I need another one. My dog oh, ate mine. Bill. Gotcha. You just need a bigger head. You hang out with me, man. You'll get a bigger head. <laughs> I, see, I shave it, though, and then and then it, nothing fits. Nah, oh, gotcha. man. See, that's the trick. Yeah, gotcha. I guess I got, I got some smaller hats maybe I shaved my head for. All right, so I'm completely sidetracked now. If your dog ate your hat, what kind of dog do you have? A little two-year-old Jack Russell mix something or other. Gotcha. That's that's not a very big dog to eat a whole hat. Well, probably chewed it up, Jay. Oh well, you know. <laughs> I, yeah. got, I, I got a. I recently adopted a full-size uh, German Shepherd. Yep, he did. And uh, she she could. I tell you what. At first, I couldn't understand why people were so scared of her, but you see her coming at you like full tilt, and uh, it's an experience. Yeah. Yeah. And when she wants to protect you and your and your seven children or five or whatever it is, <laughs> Six, she will, right in the middle. <laughs> she is going to uh she then she you'd really be intimidated. Yeah, she's she's truly a beautiful dog. She's really, really pretty. Yeah. She's got these light brown eyes. Really just I love dogs. I really do. Um and the her biggest she has an instinct for cats though. She goes after cats. And when, when my 75 pound, uh, German shepherd commits to a cat, it's all you can do to <laughs> hang on to her. She's walking you at that point. huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's funny. I, I apologize. I got completely off track here. So let's talk, but let's is talk there a track on a podcast? Is there a track? I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> otherwise, I'm usually the one taking us right off of it. <laughs> Anyways. Well, I 
I like focusing on the, our guest. Yes, we should focus on our guest. Nice. All right. So tell us a little bit about the buildup. You were one of the five winners of the all expenses paid trip to London uh, last year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, tell- ten, ten winners. There was ten. Yeah. Oh, there was ten. ten, ten My winners. apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten winners. So tell me a little bit about what you did to qualify for that. And, and I should point out, I'm just in light of our compliance officer, Krista, um, these results are not typical. Bill's not typical. And if you, your hard work benef- gives you results, I don't even know. What are, what's our whole disclaimer? Uh, let's just, yeah. You know, the disclaimer is, is that uh, Bill put in a lot of hard work to get where he is. And, and that's, that doesn't yeah, work for everybody. It's not for everybody. Renata is not for everybody. Yeah. And it won't work if you don't. So you got to you gotta you work, gotta it. work it. So how? what exactly were you doing that qualified you uh, for that trip? Um, yeah, that was an amazing trip, an amazing opportunity. And, uh, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm, I'm, I'm in that. I'm in the hunt right now. I've got some things in the works to, to pick it up for the last three months of this competition nice. as well. Nice. Well, I so remember the excited. last three months last year. Oh yeah. You killed it. You crushed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I've had three, uh, three combos come in just recently. So, uh, so I'm, I'm back on track, uh, nice. getting that going. So the next three months, uh, for December, January, February should be, pretty awesome. And it's, it's a little bit of the same, you know, I went back at, first of all, I committed to it. It's fu- I, funny that you bring that up today. Cause I just went to my wife and started talking about the, the, uh, the Danube cruise, uh, today. And I, I, I told her what I needed to do and what, what goals we needed to make and where I think I needed to be based on where I was. And so we went over those numbers this morning, but you know, I made the commitment right away was number one. I was like, you know what? It's interesting. You guys have never really been a sales uh, in, well, I've always been in sales, I guess, you know, I owned a retail sporting goods store, but um, I never considered myself like someone that was in part of sales contests like this. Right. So right. at first when I, when I, yeah, when I, when I heard about it, I was like, ah, first I was mad because I was like, oh, darn it. Bob just put up something that I'm not going to be a part of. And now I'm mad for him to do it. Now I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I'm not, if I don't make it, then I, I, I didn't get my goal. You know what I mean? Like, so I failed. Right. So then I was like, Oh, I had that fear of that. And then, and then I just put that away right away and just said, well, why don't I just seriously commit to it and then see if, and and really try to do it. Like, instead of just, you know, not trying, but pretending like I'm trying and I'm not right. So that was number one. I, I literally just committed to it. No matter what I figured, I wrote this down was that what's the worst case scenario. Like if I failed getting there, I probably had some pretty good results along the way and, and, and that would be better than where I was. Right. So I really like that idea. So I've, uh, so that was one. Number two is, uh, I, I, um, you know, I, at the time I, like you guys said, you know, results aren't typical. Um, the idea that it's an even playing field. I love that because it's, it's just simply direct sales and, and those direct sales shared commissions of your, or, or earnings of your, of your team. So, you know, I, I uh, went with my team and we had a, we had a big meeting at my house and um, you know, we had some food and some drinks and we got together and I, I gave him my vision and I said, if you guys want to come with me, I'm, I'm willing to, you know, work with you even harder than I already do to help you reach your goals as well. And we had multiple people on my team um, that five star qualified in this process. So it was a team effort to get, to get the results that I got. And um and I, I will tell you, I also, you know, I run a full time real estate business and a real estate portfolio. And typically I allow that to take precedent and to take uh, uh, to take a higher uh, priority than than my Renatus business. Right. Um, and so at this point, I decided to not have it do that. And I decided that my team, Renatus and, uh, and 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 this contest were more were as or more important. And so I decided to make sure that I was do, making effort, sales efforts and, and business efforts every day on that. And I've been doing that ever since uh, uh, and never, never looked back, even after the contest was over and I was part of the, the opportunity to be in the top 10 and go on that trip with my wife. It was probably one of the, uh, it's definitely the top two best trips I've ever taken in my life without a doubt. Yeah. That's, dude, that's amazing. And I love, I love how you talked about uh, kind of how you prepared yourself mentally 
to be able to create those results. You know, Bob talks about all the time when he when he first read Think and Grow Rich, he stopped asking the question, why me to why not me? Yeah. You know, and I feel like you did kind of the same thing where you you went from that place of saying, oh, yeah, I can't do it. I can't do it to why can't I do it? Yeah. And I, I, I think that, yeah. you know, that's, that's well, I was going to say that's that's always an interesting thing for me uh, when I, I get to meet and hang out with people, top 10 or or elite performers and Renata's making lots of money. And they're just normal people. There's nothing, you know, like it's not like they've got some superpower that nobody else can have or do or anybody right. can do it. Um, obviously, you know, you got to put in a lot of hard work and effort, which they've done. I mean, you've been around since 2007, right? Like it's it's probably been a road of growth and, and learning and self-development. And anyways, but oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that mental shift. To, and I can do it. Yeah, and I love I love how you visualized the results. How you how you were sitting at the very beginning before you'd even done anything and you said, "Okay, worst case scenario here. I invest a lot of time and create success for myself and others." Yeah. Worst thing that can happen right there and it's like, <laughs> "Well, gee, that doesn't sound so bad to me." And best case, <laughs> you end up on the Danube on a Viking River <laughs> cruise, right? Well, so Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You're, you're exactly right. You know, I'll tell you guys, there was some, you know, even even when Bob did it again and you and the home team did this again and you create this other opportunity to to take part in something that's, you know, more than just us. Right off the bat, you, you're you're I, I got I get mad. I get envious or jealous. Uh, you know, those feelings come in like, well, you know, if I don't make this and someone else gets to go and, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this. And how can I do this? Even though. Um, you know, I'm on the pit and then I, you know, I am a top income earner or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden you can just, you can eliminate that limiting belief. You can, you can reframe it. You can visualize it. You can, you can, you can imagine. And then, you know, you can, you can play, you can reframe it where, okay, if you don't make it, it's still, you get this. If you don't make it, it's still this. If, you know, all the camaraderie, the, the competition, the opportunity to talk to new people and more people and all these things and introduce Renatus to all these new people. If it doesn't pan out and you don't get the end result, you still had a great journey. And that that, that, that is a, just a reframe on what the what you know what the outcome could be, which is where you know you just let the frustration settle in and you accept it and you just go on about your business. Yeah. Man, I, I love that. So are you are you committed now? Are you going to speak it into existence right now that you're going to be in the top five for our Viking River Cruise contest? Is it five or ten? I think it's it's just the top five. This one's five. Yeah, because yeah. it's the five star winner circle. Yeah. That top five winner circle. I I uh, I absolutely. Am. I'm gonna I'm gonna speak it into existence. I'll be. I will. I will absolutely be if I'm not running, and I will. I will be on the bubble. And in the running at the end, because to where I, I have a, a very good chance of being in the top five. Nice. And that, that is, that is without a doubt I intend to do um, again. And, um, you know, I'm, I'll tell you, my motivation is uh, you know, among obviously the, my motivation is, is, is not being in there. Right. And, you know, what it would be like to be on that cruise and, and then not be there and everybody else be there. Right. Oh, like that it's, is, the, it's the FOMO, huh? The, the, the fear of yeah. missing out. Yeah. 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 Why not? I mean, it doesn't, it, it that, that just, uh, I miss it. You guys. So Jay, I don't know you, if you, you've heard of this, Matt, you may or may not remember this. Your father will never forget it. Bob. So they did a competition when I first got introduced to Renata's. And they did a competition like this, and the prize was Germany and racing exotic cars for five oh, days yeah. on the Autobahn. I remember. Yes. This. Yes. So I didn't even know what Renatus was barely. You know, I just bought my R two E two. I was getting my full combo, and and I was getting into real. I was miserable financially, and I, I and I'm watching these results on Facebook. And I was mad every time. And we listened to it on the founders call on Monday night. And he's, 
Bob got it over 200 miles an hour. I think he was driving a, an SL, a, a, a an Mercedes SLR McLaren. McLaren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And he was over two. And then 202 and then miles an hour, I think, to be yeah, exact. Yeah. And then it had been like 190 or something. I remember something. Like your mom was driving some extraordinary amount of miles an hour. Yeah. And I was just. I was just mad that I was not there doing with it. And these guys all had their own car, like these just crazy, crazy oh. cars. And uh, and it just, uh, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Um, the experience that, that, uh, that I had to live through vicariously through them to see that. So, yeah, man, I, I totally, I've never actually had opportunity to drive that fast on the Autobahn. Uh, it looks like a way good time, but I have been. He has on had the, the opportunity Autobahn. to do it on Main Street here in Centerville. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. I was just kidding. No, but I have had opportunity to be on the Autobahn when somebody else is doing that. Oh yeah. And I tell you what, when you're in a little car, and a car comes buzzing by you at 175 miles an hour when you're doing 75, what happens is the air pressure that's created at the front of the car creates this <laughs> yeah. this pressure that will push your car out <laughs> and then it's got a vacuum right behind it so it sucks your car in so it'll literally push your car out and suck you in in one motion so you go boom 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 you're just going down the road like that and they're just boom. man that this Crazy autobahn cool. sounds like a good time it is here's here's okay interesting fact that most people don't know about the autobahn almost everywhere the autobahn is only two lanes Two lanes yeah. each direction. I actually did know that, and my understanding is most of it now has a speed mile, uh, speed limit, but there's still parts that don't. What? That's just I don't know. Google, but I don't know. I haven't been there. But I tell you what, hearing about how you motivate yourself to qualify for these different excursions and to get yourself on top is awesome. I I would love to see you get qualified for uh for this viking river cruise and like bob always likes to say you know there's there's plenty of room at the top the bottom is where it gets crowded the top is where there's plenty of room that so that's awesome yeah yeah i'm really looking forward to it and um you know imagine the people that you know my my pipeline my 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 list that i had to move to clear my desk a little bit is uh is, is exciting and I, I'm looking forward to uh, engaging some of those folks with the opportunity with Renatus um, and and just uh, bring my team along. We just had a new enrollment in Pittsburgh under Jim. That's pretty exciting. Guy after two years of seeing us got started in the advanced combo and um, a lady I've been working with uh, for 10 years, uh, or I've known her for 10 years, working where they're probably two years just got it started in the advanced uh, profits combo as well. And uh, just, just exciting things. So along the way that I get to go, uh, I get to bring a lot of people with me. So Awesome. Well, I want to tell you, I really appreciate you making time for us today. We're going we're gonna to wrap up our call now. So I want to say thank you, Mr. Predabon. You are an all-star. You rock, my friend. Uh, thank you, guys. Matt, Paul, and Jay for having me. You guys are the best for the best. This was Thanks, Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. Honestly, Yes, awesome. onward. Onward and upward. On behalf of myself and Mr. Matt Snyder, we want to say, give a shout out to our producer today. Thank you very much, Mr. Aaron Peterson. And uh, for all of you that are at home, don't forget the reason why Renatus truly rocks is because of the people that are associated with it. Renatus rocks.